Hi, and welcome to another story time brought to you by ABC Read and ABC Learn, in which we are here to help develop and nurture that love of reading in every child, as well as every adult. How is everybody doing out there this evening? If it's evening time where you are, or daytime, whatever time of day it is, wherever you are around the globe, I hope that you all are doing fantabulous. That's right, because... I hope you all have read for at least 30 minutes today or you are planning on reading for 30 minutes, all right? And uh, please don't Google that word fantabulous, all right? I did put two words together to make that my own word, which is fantastic and fabulous, which is the cool thing about words. Sometimes you can do that, right? You can mix it and match and do what you want, right? Just don't write that on your paper and turn it into your teacher, all right? All right, <laughs> all right, let's get started. Before the read aloud, of course, I'm going to share with you all another benefit to reading aloud, which is you get to learn about the author's purpose. That's right. Why did the author write this book anyway? Well, there are three reasons why an author decides to write a book. And with these three reasons, they could either be put together all in one book or it could be three. It could be uh, the three reasons broken up individually. Sorry about that. I kind of got tongue tied real quick. All right. The first one is to persuade. All right. Either to persuade. The second one is to inform. And the third reason is to entertain. And yes, I'm going to define all three of those by giving you examples of each. First, to persuade. If an author chooses to write a book to persuade you into doing something, uh, for example, like if uh, an author writes a book about how delicious ice cream is. Ooh, yummy, yummy. They don't have to persuade me much because I know how delicious ice cream is, y'all. But if an author wrote a book about explaining about, um, oh, how ice cream has milk in there and, you know, you have your cream in there and, you know, you can actually add fresh fruit in there. So, you know, not only is it delicious, it can be made healthy too, Right. So that's when the author is trying to persuade you to do something. Next, inform. So for example, if an author, if an author wrote a book about uh, Frederick Douglass and they were giving you information about his life and how he uh, endured the horrors of being enslaved, that right there is informing you or giving you information. And then the last reason is to entertain you. So for example, if an author was writing a story about having a fun day at the amusement park and talked about how they were on the roller coaster and how they ate lots of funnel cake and all of that and just said it was a blast. That's entertaining, all right? And how can you remember those three words? Take the first letter of each of those words and you have had yourself a slice of pie, all right? Perform, P for, per, excuse me, perform, P for persuade, I for inform, E for entertain, all right? There you have it. Now let's get started, all right? And we can talk about after this story, what do you think the author's purpose was, all right? Bam, here we go. And let's read the title together. My Lucky Day, all right? And the author's name is Keiko Kaza or Keza. I hope that she forgives me if she's listening. I apologize if I mispronounced your last name. All right, when you look at the cover, you see what animals do you see? You see a fox, right? And you see a pig, right? F fox, pig, right? And look how the fox is looking at the pig. Hmm, what are your predictions? Oh, wow, do you think that the fox is uh, ready to get his grub on on that pig? Mm, that is a great prediction if you thought that that's what's going to happen in the book. And what about the pig? How's the pig look? Does the pig look scared or anything to you? Mm, no, I wouldn't say the pig looks scared. The pig actually looks like he's kind of like, oh, you, you want to eat me? <laughs> that's kind of what I'm envisioning the pig would say. What would you envision the pig saying? Well, let's find out whose lucky 
Today it is the good fox or the pig. Let's find out. One day, a hungry fox was preparing to hunt for his dinner. As he polished his claws, he was startled by a knock at the door. Hey, rabbit! Someone yelled outside. Are you home? Rabbit, thought the fox. If there were any rabbits in here, I'd have eaten them for breakfast. When the fox opened the door, there stood a delicious looking piglet. Oh no! screamed the piglet. Oh yes! <laughs> cried the fox. You come to the right place. <laughs> he grabbed the piglet and hauled him inside. This must be my lucky day. <laughs> the fox shouted. How often does dinner come knocking on the door? The piglet kicked and squealed. Ah, let me go, let me go. Sorry, pal, said the fox. This isn't just any dinner. It's a pig roast, my favorite. Now get into the roasting pan. <laughs> It was useless to struggle. <sighs> All right, sighed the piglet. I will, but there is just one thing. What? growled the fox. Well, I'm a pig, you know. I'm filthy. Shouldn't you wash me first? Just the thought, Mr. Fox. Hmm. The fox said to himself, he is filthy. So the fox got busy. He collected twigs. He made a fire. He carried in the water. And finally, he gave the piglet a nice bath. You're a terrific scrubber, said the piglet. There, said the fox. Now you're the cleanest piglet in the county. You stay still now. <laughs> All right, sighed the piglet. I will, but... But what, growled the fox. Well, I am a very small piglet, you know. Shouldn't you fatten me up to get more meat? Just a thought, Mr. Fox. Hmm, the fox said to himself. He is on the small side. So the fox got busy. He picked tomatoes. He made spaghetti. He baked cookies. And finally, he gave the piglet a nice dinner. Mmm, you're a terrific cook, said the piglet. There, said the fox. Now you're the fattest piglet in the county. So get in the oven. <sighs> All right, sighed the piglet. I will, but... What, what, what? shouted the fox. Well, I am a hardworking pig, you know. My meat is awfully tough. 
Shouldn't you massage me first to make a more tender roast? Just the thought, Mr. Fox. Hmm, the fox said to himself. I do prefer tender meat. So the fox got busy. He pushed and he pulled. He squeezed and he pounded the piglet from head to toe. Ooh, ooh. you give a terrific massage, said the piglet. But, the piglet continued, I've been working really hard lately. My back is uh, awfully stiff. Uh, could you push a bit harder, Mr. Fox? A little to the right, please. Ah, yes, yes. Oh, not just a little to the left. Oh, oh, oh. Mr. Fox, are you there? But Mr. Fox was no longer listening. He had passed out exhausted. He couldn't lift a finger, let alone a roasting pan. Oh. Poor Mr. Fox, sighed the piglet. He's had a busy day. Then the cleanest, fattest, and softest piglet in the county picked up the rest of his cookies and headed for home. What a bath! What a dinner! What a massage! cried the piglet. This must be my lucky day. <laughs> When he got home, the piglet relaxed before a warm fire. Hmm, let's see, he wondered, looking at his address book. Who shall I visit next? Uh, yikes! <laughs> The end. Well, I hope that you all enjoyed that story. And I hope that you all figure out, figure out rather, what was the author's purpose? What do you think the author's purpose was in writing this book, My Lucky Day? Hmm, did some of you out there guess to entertain? I would agree. Do you think, were you entertained by this story? I hope so. I know I sure was. I crack up every time I read this book, I'm cracking up. What do you think about persuading? Do you think the author was trying to maybe get you to believe something or sell something? Mm, I don't know. I, I don't, I wouldn't say so. I would say more so that the author was trying to also inform you about something, right? Well, if you think a little deeper with the story, the author was giving you ways to uh, deal with situations where if somebody's trying to trick you into doing something that, you know, you may like, I don't want to do that. You can actually be on your toes and outsmart them. Wouldn't you agree? I would say so. And uh, you let me know what you think though in the comment section below, all right? And you all take care. And um, remember, please, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. All right, happy reading.